There's a name engraved. Dog. <laughs> How inventive. Hi, my name is George. What's yours? My name's Miranda. How old are you, Miranda? I'm 12. Why are you sad? My dog's run away. Don't you want to look for it? I can't. Why not? I'm blind. Max is my guide dog. I see. Shall I find him for you? Would you do that, mister? Sure, Miranda. I'd love to. Maybe you can also find my dog whistle. Max must have somehow torn it from me when he ran away. The dog tag... I shouldn't talk to them now. Injured passenger... Excuse me. I'm not deaf. Do you have any idea why this train derailed? No, I haven't. Could it be an attack? What's that supposed to achieve? Injured or maybe even dead people? Hmm, I don't know. I understand. Have you seen two persons leaving the train? A Latin guy and a tall woman with black hair? If I'd seen them leave the train, I wouldn't be here, don't you think? Okay. Are you okay? I'm fine. I suffered some minor bruises. But if I look around here, I see that I'm one of the luckier ones. Pleased to hear that. Okay, I'll be... I am not a thief. I am a middle-aged man. He's a... There's not much point. I didn't notice him a moment. Hello? The old man is... Hmm, he's snuffling. Hmm, nice idea, but now I really must... I take a and I see that he really ripped the whistle from Miranda. Carefully, I... That... I shouldn't...
Hi, Miranda. Here's Max back. Oh, thanks very, very much, mister. No problem. If I can do anything for you, just tell me. Okay, I'll do that. Nope. Oh my god, that looks like a bomb. The clock gives me thir- Excuse me, sir? Yes. Where are you coming from? I'm from China. Don't you see that? <laughs> That's not what I mean. I mean, have you been in the train all the time? Yes, of course. I didn't notice you a moment ago. Impossible. Have you seen a young woman with a Latin guy? Maybe. I don't know. What do you mean, maybe, I don't know? I have... Um... <sighs> hey, are you alright? He behaved so strangely when I asked about Nico and Khan. I search the body. And find a photo. The words C. Hang are written on the back. And there's a letter. At the end, the letter gets more and more unreadable. I can only read parts of it. The man wrote something about k k k term. Did he mean the Templars? That wouldn't make sense. What has a Chinese prince got to do with the Templars? I search the body again and find a roll of duct tape. The old man is dead. I use the pointed side of the dog tag to cut the bomb free. Even if the thought of a ticking time bomb in my pocket is anything but calming, I must take it. Somebody might trigger the ignition. Now there's duct tape on each side of the bomb. And now? That's not gonna... But, at a closer look, I see that it's a little bent. The coach... The tape makes the bomb stick to the door in front of the rift. One look at the clock tells me there's not much time left. Only five minutes. Quick now, I must warn the other passengers. 
But how? I need to get their attention somehow. Not much time left. Hi, Miranda. Hi. Could I borrow your whistle? Of course. Here you are. Thanks. That's not gonna work. Please move quickly to the other end of the coach. A bomb is going to go off in a few moments. Are you the bartender? No, I'm the holy St. Peter. Calm down, I'm only asking. And I'm only answering. Okay, okay, so you're the bartender. Aren't you wondering why there are so few people here? Oh, a new pub opened right across the road. Bobby country, how noble. Business has been going down here ever since. Apart from Mike and Stephen over there, not many people find their way into this place. Those two are virtually part of this pub. So, what do you do all day? Not much. I clean the glasses, read newspapers, and do whatever comes up. Sometimes, I'm extremely lucky and the dishwasher packs up. So then, I can repair it. What kind of newspapers do you read? I don't care, I read whatever. I'd even read a paper that's five years old. Have you seen a dark-haired woman with a Latin-looking guy? Is she your wife, son? Well, not yet, but she's my girlfriend. So, you're a couple? You could say that. Then why is she roaming around with that Latin-looking guy, instead of being with you? That's a long story. Listen, I don't want to bore you with the story of my life, so have you seen them? No. Do you know anything about the Templars? Oh, yes indeed, sir, I do. I read a lot and attend seminars, so I learn quite a few things. And I love the Templars. They're my second hobby, so to speak. Yeah, mine too, so to speak. Tell me something about them. A medieval order of knights eradicated by Philip the Fair. In three weeks, there's going to be an exhibition about the Templars in Paris. I really must attend, even if my wife will kick up a fuss about it. I am impressed. Do you know whether the Templars can be linked to the Chinese culture? Certainly. The Templars had good connections to the Chinese royalty. Which royalty? They are said to have connections to Prince Zi Hang. Zi Hang? Exactly. There's some uncertainty about both parties' intentions, though. After all, the Prince wasn't able to support the Templars with soldiers, as his own army was so badly trained. And the Templars were too greedy to support the Chinese court financially. The links are supposed to be intact even today, though. Are there any further clues? The exhibition in Paris is expected to be very helpful regarding that matter. It may even provide some new evidence. Do you know where exactly in Paris it will be held? I'm afraid not, but I'm going to find out soon. I only know this much. A seal is mentioned in one of the last writings of the Grand Master Jacques de Molay. And he wrote about the return of the Templars, which will be initiated by that very seal. Do you think such a seal exists? Oh yes, I'm quite sure of that. What does that mean? Nothing. I doubt that the seal will be of any importance. Jacques de Molay only wanted to frighten his pursuers and enemies shortly before he died. A very unnatural death, I may add. But all he got were taunts and derision. I need to get to that exhibition in Paris as quickly as possible. Maybe I'll find the seal there. It must be important for the Templars to kill for it. But first, I need a room for the night. There are no flights to Paris today. Could I rent a room? 
Shouldn't be a problem. We've got plenty of rooms on the first floor, and they're all free. Then I'll take one. There you go. It's the first door on the left-hand side. Thanks. These two guys don't exactly... Good afternoon. Cheers, mate. My name is George Stobart. I'm on a trip around Britain. I'm Mike and that's Steve. There are different sorts of notes on the board. One of them is an article about an organization which inspects pubs for hygiene standards. They obviously haven't been in here. It's a soccer poster. I don't like soccer. Nico likes it though. Because lots of things have found their way into my pocket over the last couple of years. This poster definitely won't. It's a soccer poster because of the players. I put the key into the lock. There's a creaking noise and the key slips out of the lock again. Either the bartender gave me the wrong key or the lock is broken. I can't... Damn it! The bartender has left! A needle won't hurt. I dropped. Do you have any idea where the bartender has gone? Yeah, I went to get himself something to read. Should be back in an hour. Well, who looks after the pub in the meantime? We do. You? Yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah, we're used to it, mate. It's not the first time Mr. Powell has left his pub. Do you know how I can get into my room? The key doesn't work. A problem we know well. What can I do? Are you up for a little match? You won't tell me unless I agree, right? Right, mate. And you have to win, of course. No problem. Do you know Indian wrestling? Arm wrestling, you mean? That's what you want to do? Right. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. I win. I'm no match for you. Never give up, mate. Hey, Mike. Of I win. I'm no match for you. Never give up, mate. Is that water you're drinking? Yes, it is. I don't drink alcohol anymore. Now you're surprised, aren't you? A little. You see, a couple of years ago, I forgot my own children's names. All because of the drinking. Since then, I've been on the water. And besides, my belly has become sort of tender. No, I really don't want any. There are some health magazines in this rack. Not really interesting. He looks pretty ill. That's probably a result of having to deal with all those ill people who breathe germs all over him. There's a variety of small files on the counter. The label reads laxative. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? How long have you been working here? Please, sir. If you need my help, just tell me. Otherwise, I'd be grateful if you let me go on with my business. I'm not particularly interested in idle chit-chat. I just thought that... 
I just told you not to bother me unless you need medical treatment. Understood. I wondered if I could get this file over here. That's a lack. Yes, I know. I've been... What are the exact symptoms? Um, well... I knew it. Listen, mister. The laxative is free, and you don't even need a prescription for it. Nevertheless, I only hand out laxatives, and you... I scanned this outdated news, but accept a report about a school that was hit by an outbreak of constipation, affecting hundreds of children. There's nothing of interest. Wait a minute. Constipation. Here's something about the symptoms. The children complained about severe pain in the stomach and back. Furthermore, there were complaints about a nasty feeling of nausea. Sir, can I please get one of those files? I've told you repeatedly not to bother me. Okay, Stobart. Now it's time to show how good you are at acting. But sir, my stomach hurts and my back... The pain is unbearable. It's agony. Hmm. You really seem to be ill. Better take one of these, but only one. Mike runs to the washroom like a scalded cat. The fact that his belly was a little tender has fueled the effect of the laxative. Stephen has run after him. That's not... The table is wet now. Now what? Nope. The soap makes the surface of the table quite slippery. Hey Mike, another match? Of course. And I'm afraid you lose, Mike. Looks like it. But I could swear my elbow slipped on the table. Come on, Mike. Don't be a sore loser. You're right. I'm probably imagining things. You won fair and square. So, how can I open the door? Just give it a decent kick, and it will open all right. That's it? That's it, mate. Thank you, Mike. I pull at the door, but it doesn't open. The barkeeper was talking about an exhibition in Paris. But where could... Come on, Stobart, use your brain. The only museum that comes to mind is the Muse Crew, but there are two problems. First, it's been a long time, and I don't know if I can find it. Second, Andre. I guess I don't have a choice. Great, I'm lost. Wow, a P. 
piece of a broken dental brace. Hi, could you help me? That depends on your question. What's your name? My name is George Stobart. Stobart, two B's and two T's. What's your name? Nice to meet you, George. My name is Dr. Blackter. How can I help you? I don't mean to be rude, but why are you bound hand and foot? I can hardly answer that question, George. Why is that? You must have done something or you wouldn't be in chains, would you? Well, in my eyes, what I did wasn't wrong at all, George. Only in the eyes of the people that saw me do it. To me, what's important is not what I've done or not done, but why you're asking me about it. In today's society, it seems almost commonplace to put people in chains who haven't done anything wrong. Consequently, I assume it's nothing unusual to be in chains anymore. Which leads me to the question, why are you still walking free? Isn't that an irrefutable sign that we're living in an Orwellian society, George? Wow, you know, I've never seen it from that perspective. Putting that guy in chains makes sense to me now. Well, would you tell me what entirely innocent and legal act you committed before this degraded society felt the need to take you into custody? I had dinner with a patient. Wow, that does seem a bit of a harsh sentence. Maybe I had the wrong impression of you. Is that really all there is to it? Well, he was the main cause. Mother of God. Now that is illegal, doctor. And not exactly great medical ethics. You didn't know him, George? So you can't judge, can you? He was a very unpleasant human being whose way of treating others put him totally out of place in this world. But as a doctor, shouldn't you have been helping to remedy that? I cure only what I am able to cure, George. In that case, it wasn't the patient I had to cure, but the world that needed to be cured of him, and is that bit cleaner as a result. Well, I definitely wasn't wrong about him. Doctor, I think you have a serious problem. If you say so, George. You see, I have stopped arguing with people. Nobody ever really listens to my arguments. I can see why. I guess I've heard enough of that. Let's change the subject. You don't know what to say, right, George? You know, there are people that want to seriously discuss things, and others only want to do small talk. I'm not one for such primitive conversation. It's beneath me. Which kind would I be, then? My knowledge of human nature tells me that you wouldn't like my answer. You'd be offended. All right, I can live with your judgment. You see, George, even though I haven't told you, you already know the answer. You're offended, and you don't want to discuss it any further. I was right in all respects. He was right. I think this lunatic is too smart for me. I'm looking for the museum croon. I should know where to find it, but I got lost somehow. I can't tell you the way, but I'd like to know something from you, or rather about you in exchange. Listen, I'm not really feeling like Q&A games right now. Quid pro quo, George. You tell me something, I tell you something. If it's absolutely necessary. Do you have a girlfriend, George? Hey, that's kind of personal. Do you want to know the way or not, George? I'm sure that none of the people you'll meet here will be as cooperative as me. Okay, I have a girlfriend. Well done. First, walk down this street until you reach a corner shop. What's your girlfriend's name, George? Why should I tell you that? Quid pro quo, George. You've got some nerve. Her name is... Natalie. You're lying, George. I can see that. I used to work with people who were lying to me, remember? You've got some nerve. Her name is Nico. Well done, George. Well done. After that corner shop, you turn left to face Notre Dame, then walk straight on. Do you have dreams, George? But... Quid pro. Okay, okay. I dream about my girlfriend being abducted and I can't do anything about it. That's terrible sometimes. I can't believe what I've just told this madman. 
Take the first turn right and you'll find the museum. Do you hear your girlfriend scream in your dreams, George? Do you hear her scream? Take good care of your girlfriend, George. Museum Croon, closed for refurbishing. Damn it, wait, maybe there's another museum. I can't remember what the French call the Baphomet Idol. Was it Marseille? I don't think so. I think it was something with an S. If only someone could help us. Pardon me? Excuse me. Hmm. Excuse me. It says that Mofasan is collecting donations for the Third World next Saturday. The priest invites the congregation to come and listen to the choir sing. That's it! Why didn't I remember the priest sooner? He knew about the Templars when I first came to Paris. Maybe he can help. Pardon me. Yes, what can I do for you? Do you remember me? Oh, you're also a man whose chalice I cleaned. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no, it's alright. I enjoyed doing it. Really? That's a relief. Have you seen Nicole Collard lately? She's my girlfriend. Black hair, smartly dressed. I'm looking for her. Every day scores of people enter these walls. I find it hard to remember all their names and faces. But I am sure you will find her. God will be with you. Can you tell me what the idol of Baphomet used to be called? Baphomet? No, uh, I mean in French. Oh well, uh, let me think. I can't remember. But I'll remember seeing the name somewhere here in this church. Okay, I'll take a look around. Thanks anyway. Oh, you are very welcome. This church is just as splendid as I remember. Yes, it is. And that is thanks to the people of the parish, who have given large donations not only to support the poor souls in the third world, but also for the restoration of this church. Are you coming to this service next Saturday? I have read your appeal for donations, but I'm afraid I won't have the time. There's a lot going on in my life at the moment, you know? It is sad to see fewer and fewer people coming to the sermon over the last few years, you know? It used to be different. Well, I can understand those people, though. God gave them the wonderful gift to acquire knowledge, and they make use of it. But progress makes people rush from place to place. They just don't have the time anymore. It is strange that the faster they move, the less time they seem to have. As I take a closer look, I see it. The writing bafflement below the illustration of Jesus can easily be made out. But there is something written underneath it, much smaller.
Hmm. A magnify. Hmm. Now what can I do for you, monsieur? I'll have a coffee. Black coffee, please. Anything else? Here we are, sir. Do you? No, I'm sorry, but uh, we do not have any ice cream. But we do have quite cheap uh, ice lollies. Okay. I'd like a piece of cake. Oh, excusez-moi. Our patisserie couldn't deliver any cakes this week. I'd like to pay, please. That is 16 euros 80. What? That's a rip-off. Okay. I don't have a choice, do I? Hmm, a magnifying glass. It probably belongs to one of the tourists. I wonder if they'll miss it. I guess not. I can see the small writing through the magnifying glass. It reads Sue. That's it. Hello? So? That's it? Yes, that's it. Thank you very much. No, not at all. Maybe you can help me in exchange. Okay, what's the problem? Can you tell me where I can find a museum that houses objects from the age of the Templars? Let me think. How about the Museum Natres near the Mont Fasson? Thanks, you've been a great help. Have you heard about the explosion a few years back? What? The explosion. Broken glass all around. Me in the middle. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Boom, and everything was broken. Luckily, I was able to save myself by diving out of the way like a cat. Well, that's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was. Kind of. There are two cashiers. It says you. Oh. I don't have any money left. I'll have to sneak in. There are two cashiers. Hey, you. You haven't paid. No one gets in for free. 
Come here and pay. Can you tell me s Be quiet and come- But I can't go in without a ticket. That's not our problem. We're watching the match. Um, you won't just... I can't. There's restoration work going on in there. The exhibits will be available in about two months. I hear that Museum Kroon is completely closed for restoration. That's true. The city is investing a lot of money in the restoration of the local museums. You're lucky the museum hasn't been closed as well. Have you ever heard of the Templars? You mean the Knights Templar? Yes, there are some artifacts just behind this door. Do you know what it is? No, monsieur. I'm not really interested in those things. My fields are football and... Well, my wife. Have you seen a good-looking black-haired woman? Evans, no. I am happily married. Well, most of the time. She's my girlfriend. I'm looking for her. Sorry, I haven't seen her. I can't wait for two months. Can't you make a little exception? I need some information I can probably get in this room. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't let you go in there. Nice weather. Perfect for playing football. Outside. I can't take it any longer, sir. Could you stop talking about football, please? Aren't you interested in the match? Your colleagues in the ticket booth are watching the match between France and Germany. Don't you want to see that match? You're right, of course. I'd love to see the match, but I'm not allowed to leave my post here. That's why I'd be much obliged. If you could stop talking about it, it makes me sad. Hmm. Your colleagues are watching the game in the ticket booth, and you're here. Don't you think it's a little unfair that you have to work? Well, what can I say? I tried to take the day off, but my colleagues were faster than me. There are two cashiers. I don't have any money left. I've tried it the nice and friendly way. Now it's time for a dastardly piece of cunning. Oh my god, a penalty for the French team! What a brutal foul on Zidane! Ah, I must see that game. Could you take over my post for a minute while I go and watch the penalty? Sure, pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. Don't let anyone in. I'll be back in a minute. It's not an FHM, but you must always educate yourself with new things. This says that the parchment is one of the last documents written by Jacques de Molay. Shortly before he was burnt at the stake, he is said to have told one of his servant boys, Geoffrey de Charnay, the secret of a lost seal that was said to be more powerful than a thousand gods. Wow, a thousand gods, huh? Not just one, but a thousand! It says, Mole instructed Charney to look for the seal, but before he could find it, he met the same fate as his master. Charney was burnt alive by the French Inquisition, although managed to hide the parchment from his enemies. 
the seal has remained lost to this day. The only trace that the parchment gives leads to is Portugal Tomar, a provincial small town northeast of Lisbon, the Templar's last European stronghold in the 14th century. When Tomar fell and the order was destroyed, the seal disappeared in the confusion of the war. But it is assumed that the seal is still hidden somewhere in the area. The sandy and rocky hills of Tomar are an attractive destination for archaeologists, tourists, and adventurous treasure seekers. That must be it. Tomar! Pardon? Uh, nothing. It's alright. Stobart, you are fantastic. First, you got rid of the Watchmen, and now you even know your next destination. Portugal. <laughs>